Finally, work is over, Drew said to himself as he left the building. Drew was, you know, an ordinary businessman, but he wasn't all that crazy about his job. He didn't hate the job he had, but he really didn't like it, either. There was just nothing exciting about business, and the job itself meant getting up early and leaving late. He could find more exciting-looking jobs on his way to work. For example, every day he would ride a taxi cab to work both mornings and nights. He had heard a lot of things that the occupation wasn't as fun as it sounded, as it required a good sense of direction and being willing to actually drive long distances, but he didn't care. He enjoyed driving around town, which waking up early prohibited, and taxi drivers would get paid to do it. Not to mention, there's all the interesting people you meet doing it, and there were all these adventures to be had and incredibly fast driving too. Okay. Maybe Drew has played a bit too much crazy taxi. Either way, he always enjoyed taxi rides. He liked talking to the driver. He liked looking around town, and he thought the driver deserved whatever penny he owed. Right now, he had to catch one, but it was an unlucky night for him because he had to work overtime. He's never seen any taxis driving around at this hour, and he doubted he'd find any. But then he saw hope. From the distance, he saw a taxi cab and one he'd never seen before. As it came to him, he identified it to be a cab from a company named Diamond Taxi. The name sounded familiar from somewhere, but Drew shrugged it off and hopped in. I need to get to, insert address here, Drew said to the driver as he took his jacket off. I'm on it. He heard the driver say. The driver's voice sounded pretty tough but in a friendly kind of way. The driver put his foot on the pedal and drove the taxi. Relatively fast, actually, but it looked like he was good at driving fast. Must be an experienced driver. Thanks for picking me up so late, he told the driver. It's alright, the driver said, it's just what I do for my company. So, Drew started, what's it like being an experienced taxi driver? Hey, it's the life, the driver said, I get bad days often, and people who don't pay the fare, but it's a thrill ride for the most part. I bet. Drew said, I wish I had a job like you. Well that's a coincidence, the driver said, I could use an assistant, or, a sidekick, per se. You're the first person in a while to actually interact with me as I drive, and it would be nice to have a buddy for that. Well maybe I could be your sidekick, Drew said, half out of sarcasm. Well, the driver said, you just got to know the basics to being a taxi driver. Like always look where you're going, keep a positive attitude. Make sure you collect the fare, I could use help with that, and always remind them not to leave anything in the taxi. Oh boy, Drew said in regards to the ladder, I wonder how many people didn't fall. As if out of luck, he felt something someone left in the taxi. A pair of goggles, it was a curved, red and green pair of goggles, and it was really small. Hey, he said, someone left their tiny goggles here. Hey, I guess it's yours now. The driver said. Might as well try them on. Drew was pretty sure the driver was just joking when he said that, but he still tried the goggles on. As expected, they made for a pretty small pair, although it still technically fit. That's when he decided to take it off. Except, he couldn't. Despite the fact that he had just very easily put the goggles on his head, he could hardly even reach now. Looking down at his arms and hands, he was shocked to find that his thumb and pinky on each hand were gone, and polite pads were forming on his hands. Plus, his arms were much shorter, barely as tall as his head, and they were much skinnier now as well. The looked so flimsy, and they were so short he could only see them because his sleeves were bagging up. What's going on? Drew asked nervously. Don't worry, the driver said. You have to expect weird things from Diamond Taxi. His hands were pretty much cat paws now and yellow fur was sprouting from them and spreading down his arms. As it reached his torso, it started to shrink and shorten, until his stomach and chest combined were as tall as his previous stomach. His figure also slimmed down more there, as his figure was now leaner than before. As the changes reached his legs, they shortened dramatically until they were as tall as his feet, as his pants fell off of them. His feet shrunk down more, causing his shoes and socks to fall off as his feet went through very similar changes as his hands, except their resulting cat paws were longer, flatter, and fit for standing. By now, 
The yellow fur had reached that area. Drew was pretty much buried in his shirt by this point, but it was finally shrinking to fit him. The sleeves shrunk back until they were fit for his tiny arms, and the shirt was now only as long as his new torso. Pockets formed on both sides of the front, as three buttons went down the middle, with two closed and the top one open. The shirt lengthened down his short legs, as the areas in between connected and the leg areas formed small leggings making the shirt also function as pants. A hole formed in back of the shirt, down by the legs, where a cat tail came through and extended to his neck, as it covered in yellow fur. Finally, his head was changing. It was shrinking a bit so the goggles finally fit, although it was still comically big for his body. His nose rounded out, becoming red and wet, as it pushed his face out into a cat-like muzzle. His mouth widened and his teeth sharpened, with two cat fangs sticking out as his lips shrunk down to look invisible. By now, his head was covered in yellow fur, especially the cheek areas, except his muzzle was now covered in tan fur. Whiskers pierced their way through Drew's skin, causing him to wince a bit. His ears shrunk down immensely, as they moved upwards underneath the goggles, onto the top of his head. From there, they became triangular shaped, and extended outwards. His hair became the same yellow as his fur and was brushed forward to stick out in the goggles. Finally, Drew squinted his eyes in pain. His eyes were becoming more slitted, more feline, and much better at seeing. So good, in fact, that the extra sight was uncomfortable to Drew and he just decided to squint his eyes to get his normal sight. The taxi cab had stopped for some small traffic, and Drew was startled and confused of what was happening. Until he got a look at the car mirror, he saw a very familiar face. He was a feline now, with yellow fur and goggles, but who? What just happened to me? He had the confidence to say, what have I become? To respond, the driver put his hand on the glove compartment and turned directly to Drew, revealing the face of a big orange bulldog, but a friendly one. My partner, he said. The name's Dribble. My old pal Spitz recently took on a fully-fledged job as a game designer with Wario. So will you be the one in place of him? He offered his massive hand. Drew, now revealed to be Spitz, was flattered and a bit overwhelmed by this offer. But how could he say no? He grabbed Dribble's hand as he was lifted to the front seat, as Dribble pounded the gas pedal and the two took off into the night.